So um, what we want to look at today is um, different ways that brass players can change the timbre. If I say timbre, does that mean anything to you? Yeah, it's one back there on the table. What does it mean? <laughs> no, no, tambourine? No, not tambourine. What, what, what do you think tambourine? Um, oh, it's the different sounds and pitches that you move your mouth to make. Different, different sounds. It's not really the pitches, but for any given pitch, the timbre is the characteristic of the sound, or, or maybe the overtone structure. So can you just play a note on the bassoon, uh, your, your concert B flat? Get the concert B flat on flute over here. Okay, if you all closed your eyes, would you know the difference between the bassoon and the flute? Yes. Okay, I mean it's pretty obvious. And, and can we get your tuning note on the on, on the alto sax, Daryl? But play play your um, that same note. Okay. So everybody close your eyes, and I'm gonna except for the except for the bassoon and alto sax. Everybody else close your eyes, and, and I'm gonna. I want you to say which instrument is, is being played at any time. Everybody close your eyes. Which one's that? All right, so it's pretty easy to recognize it. Your, your, your brain is processing all, all these different overtones. It's really not hard at all. You do it every day. Uh, you, can, you can recognize your mother's voice or, or vice versa. Uh, because of the timbre. Right. Yeah. So, so with uh, woodwind, woodwind instruments can, can change the timbre a little bit uh, within the instrument, but, but oftentimes woodwind players play multiple instruments. So you might have uh, alto clarinet and, and, and B flat clarinet. You have uh, sax players might play the entire family of saxes, and, and uh, you know an oboe player might also play an English horn. So uh, with brass players, instead of changing instruments, we can do things. Uh, using mutes to, to accomplish a little change in the sound. So a good orchestrator understands how that works. Well, you can let's just hear what it sounds like first without a mute. Uh, uh, just take out a bell. Changes the timbre, but it does soften it at the same time, makes it a little bit more mellow. And then this particular mute has a triple value, it changes it to a bucket mute. What did you do just there? What I did is I put a felt liner in there. which really flattens the sound out and makes it really suppressed. And then, if you take this felt liner and you turn it around, it actually closes off the entire horn. On that, and can you imagine music where, where it might be useful to hear that? Uh, not every mute makes the music quieter. So you got a, you got a plunger. Let's, let's hear the okay. on the plunger here. Okay. Um, Jamie, you want to demonstrate the plunger? Can you do that with the wah, 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 wah thing? That sound compared to what you've been hearing. How, how would you call it? Sharp, a piercing, a little more buzzy, piercing yeah. sound. Yeah. So it really. So when we talk about the timbre, timbre is about overtones. 
that really enhances the high overtones. So you, so you hear less of the, of, the, of the main note and you hear more of the sizzling notes that are kind of like cymbals. But, so here's a variation on a straight mute. It, it doesn't look at all like a straight mute, but it's kind of like, kind of like that. So plug, plug this in. Uh, so <laughs> they should have figured maybe they should have been keen. So. They also juggle them. Yeah. <laughs> so just, let's see what that sounds like. I've never played this, sir. Yeah. The reason, the reason it's the shape that it is, is because it's intended to be used together with plunger to give it a little different sound than what you normally have out of a plunger. So it's, it's kind of a Dixie land sound. Pardon? Oh, the plunger story. Why don't you tell the plunger story? You know the uh, the you know, like, Didn't you go into the store one day and you took off and you didn't have anything, so you ran in and you got the end of the plunger. You walked right out and took the stick off, and she was like, "Don't you need the stick?" Yeah. <laughs> so, and, 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 and what every trombone player is, is trained to say in that case is, "No, no thanks. No, th no thanks. I, I use my hands." hands. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so uh, anyway. simple things. Somebody took a lot of time experimenting with different shapes to get the sound and not to mess up the intonation at the same time. Yeah, that one gets a bubble in it when you get into the lower range. It, it makes the note not lock in. So if you're playing a, a three-hour big band job, it can be pretty boring for the audience if, if, if all the charts sound exactly the same. So oftentimes they'll, they'll call for some of these different mutes just to give it a little variety. This one's called a solo tone. Uh, or they call it a clear tone, but it's generically called a solo tone. Do you, you have any of those? Do you have no, no. My, let's I, hear what it sounds like on the front of bone. I don't know what happened to my old solo tone. I have one. Okay. So, so <laughs> maybe close your eyes and listen to this and see how you would describe this sound. Oh, no. <laughs> it sets me up. Store. Any idea what might be going on with this? Yes. 
this, this is one that you don't really see called for very much. It's more of a gadget and you. It's not so. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, so um, let's see what that sounds like. You got a little screen on this Wow. You never want to get the trauma player then. started all this years ago. This is a mute somewhere he came up with and it looks like somebody took two straight mutes and glued them together but if you look inside there's something a little different. Any idea what that is? It's a dead rat. A dead rat? No. <laughs> you want to say it again? A kazoo. A kazoo? <laughs> Here's another plunger made out of a made out of a woodland raccoon. You want to you want to try plunging this? Can you come up here and oh yeah, do the raccoon plunger for it. Okay, so so you hold hold the trombone in your right hand. You hold this in your left hand. Hold the trombone right here in your right hand. Hold this in your left hand. Hold the mic. Okay, put it over your bell, and then then you roll it out as you play a note. Or roll it out faster. <laughs> so do it a little louder. louder. There we go. But there is a practical problem that we have. If you're playing if you're playing in a pit orchestra, you oftentimes have mute changes all over the place. There might be 30 mute changes in, in three minutes. Uh, and they may only give you like half a second or it seems like maybe two seconds to make a mute change to go from from straight mute to open or, or even just, just change mutes so uh so that's why i came up with this little fun thing uh, come on over here and we'll put this in this is a straight mute with a with a twist go ahead and put that in okay uh, go ahead and why would we not go ahead and play with it. so so he's playing a straight mute part the timbre of your sound while you're playing, even, even if you're not a brass player and don't have mutes, you still can change the timbre of, of your sound uh, by, you know, just by how much air you're moving, how, how, how quickly the air is moving through the instrument, and, you know, how tightly you're, you're, you're uh, grasping the reeds and so on. So um, think about how you change that as you play, because that, that uh, can make a big difference on how we sound as an ensemble.